Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, brings you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Dana Andrews and Pat Crowley in War of the Worlds. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we are going to take a look into the possible frightening future, as though the present weren't bad enough, and see what might happen if our Earth were invaded by another planet. It's George Pal's production for Paramount, War of the Worlds, and our stars are Dana Andrews and Pat Crowley. They will join me later for a preview of George Powell's latest production for Paramount, Conquest of Space. Meanwhile, here's our good friend, Ken Carpenter. It would be hard to find a man who works as many hours a day as you women do. For instance, you spend five and a half hours every week just doing dishes, and that's only for a family of four. But Lux Liquid Detergent gives you back some of that time. Lux Liquid is made especially to help you do dishes fast and easy. It floats grease right off. Plates, glasses, utensils, even pots and pans come clean really fast. Just a teaspoonful does a dishpan full. One can outlasts several boxes of the leading laundry powder. Your hands stay nice, too. Lux liquid is almost as mild as Lux toilet soap. The next best thing to a dishwashing machine, that's Lux liquid. Lever Brothers unconditionally guarantees Lux liquid is just as wonderful as we say. And the millions of women who've used it have found that Lux Liquid is as good for dishes as Lux Flakes Care is for nylons. Buy it when you mark it. Lux Liquid in the can with the dripless spout. Now act one of War of the World, starring Dana Andrews as Clayton and Pat Crowley as Sylvia. No one would have believed in the middle of the 20th century that human affairs were being watched keenly and closely by intelligences greater than man's. Yet across the gulf of space on the planet Mars, intellects vast and cool and unsympathetic regarded our Earth with envious eyes, slowly and surely drawing their plans against us. Mars is more than 140 million miles from the sun, and for centuries it has been in the last stages of exhaustion. The inhabitants of this dying planet looked across space with instruments and intelligences of which we have scarcely dreamed, searching for another world to which they could migrate. Their nearest world was giant Jupiter, where the atmospheric pressure is thousands of pounds to the square inch. They could not go there, nor to Saturn, nor to Pluto, planets encased in eternal ice. They could not go to Neptune or Uranus, twin worlds in eternal night, and surrounded by unbreathable atmospheres of methane gas and ammonia vapor. They could not go to Mercury. Its temperature is that of molten lead. Of all the worlds that the intelligences on Mars could see and study, only our own warm Earth was green with vegetation, bright with water, and possessed a cloudy atmosphere eloquent of fertility. It did not occur to mankind that a swift, fate may be hanging over us, that it would come at the time of our nearest approach to the orbit of Mars, that it would begin in or over the mountains northeast of Los Angeles, California, on a pleasant summer evening. Rodeo, this is Pine Summit Lookout. I got a smoke. Okay, what's your reading? Uh, azimuth, 160 degrees, 30 minutes. Right where that meteorite just hit. Did you see it? Not me, but a couple of the guys did. Must have been a pretty big fireball. Big? I've never seen anything like it. Hey, look, you better get a pump truck over there before the fire gets really going. Will do. Trouble? 
Truck number three to D.O. Number three to D.O. D.O. to number three. How are you coming? Still pumping water on the fire, but it's under control. Unless this meteorite heats things up again. Over. You mean it's still red hot? Over. Red hot is right. And as big as a barn. Over. Who are you kidding? Over. I said big as a barn. Mac, I think somebody ought to take a look at it. Might be something for those astronomers down at Palomar. Over. Maybe there's some guys even closer. The station at Pine Summit reported there were a couple of fellas camping up there. Said they were scientists. Yeah? What kind? You don't want any butterfly experts or lizard specialists. Over. <laughs> I got you. Stand by and I'll check find some. <laughs> no, no butterflies or lizards. Just brook trout, yes. I'm uh, Chief Fry Cook. Mm -mm. They sure smell good, don't they? There's plenty if you'd like to join us. Uh, I'd like to, but I got to get back to lookout. Uh, <clears throat> it, what I really meant was, didn't you two tell me you were scientists from Pacific Tech? Mm-hmm. Dr. Like Bilderbeck is one of the country's top biochemists. Bio... Mm. And he wouldn't know about meteors. That's your department, Clayton. Uh, the district officer phoned us at the summit. Wanted us to have an expert look at that meteor. Landed about 10, 12 miles from here over by Linda Rose. Well, I thought we could tell much about it tonight. Probably won't be cool enough to touch for hours yet. Maybe not till morning. And in the morning, I'm due back at the lab. Well, that's what I was just thinking. All right, I'll stay over. Perhaps in the morning, the district officer can fix me up with a lift to Linda Rose. How about me? You? Sure. My relief's coming up first thing tomorrow morning. I'd kind of like to get a look at that meteor myself. Good. That's a deal. Uh, Professor? Yes? Those trout do smell awful good, don't they? <laughs> Change your mind? Yeah. <laughs> my wife always said my strongest point's my weakness. <laughs> <laughs> What do you know? Look at all them cars. Yeah. Sightseers already. Yeah, one of them's the sheriff. That's his car parked on the fire break. Hi. Fiddler, up here. Well, that ranger waving at us? Yeah, that's Smith. Come on. <laughs> the meteor short plowed the tops off those trees, didn't it? Hmm. That's odd. They don't usually hit at such an oblique angle. Hey, Smith, where is it? Down here in the gully. That's it down there. Half buried under all that loose earth. Ah, still smoking. <laughs> you bet it is. You could fry eggs on it. Ooh, really is big as a house, isn't it? Hey, I wouldn't get too near that thing. It'll scorch you. Oh, thanks. I'll bear that in mind. Did you see it come down? Hmm? Did I see it? Yes. My uncle and I were coming out of the movies last night just when it flashed across the sky. We heard the explosion when it hit here. That's what I don't understand. Why a meteorite that size didn't make a bigger crater? Well, the ranger told us a scientist is coming over from Pacific Tech. He'll be able to tell you. He knows all about meteors. Oh, he does? Really? Hmm. He's top man in astro and nuclear physics. Clayton Forrester. Well, you must have heard of him. <laughs> it appears that you have. Well, I did a thesis on American scientists when I was working for my master's degree. Forrester was the man behind the new atomic engines. One of these days, he'll win the Nobel. <laughs> oh, he isn't that good. He certainly is. I think that if you knew oh, him... Oh, I, I do know him. Uh, that is, slightly. Oh? What's he like? I mean, as a man. Well... For one thing, when he goes hunting or fishing, he never shaves. After four or five days, he looks about as fuzzy as, uh, well, as, as I do. Oh, you, you're Dr. Forrester? <laughs> yes, that's right. Oh, I'm Sylvia Van Buren. How do you do? Very well, now that I've met the Dr. Clayton Forrester. Come on, I want my uncle to meet you. Oh, but I, uh, Oh, please, can... he's just over there talking to the sheriff. <laughs> All right, you in. Well, they won't be able to haul this one off to a museum. <laughs> they certainly won't. Uncle Matthew. Yes, my dear. I want you to meet Dr. Clayton Forrester, the astrophysicist. 
Dr. Forrester, my uncle, Dr. Collins, pastor of the community church. Oh, I'm so glad to know you, Dr. Forrester. How do you do, sir? Hey, Sheriff. Hmm? Look, look here. Yeah, what's wrong? Borrowed this Geiger counter off a guy that just came out here looking for uranium. Listen to it. Oh. Mind if I try that a moment, Ranger? Hmm? Oh, no, no, here you are. Oh, that's the point that pulled me to toward the gully. See what I mean? Uh-huh. It's the meteor, all right. It's radioactive? Apparently. But why? It's beyond me. You mean there's no record of anything like this happening before? Well, I've never heard of it. Now, maybe I'll stick around until that thing cools off. Uh, Dr. Collins? Yes? Where's a good place in town where I could shave and clean up a little bit? <laughs> well, the best place is my house, Dr. Forrester. Sylvia and I'd be delighted if you'd stay with us. Well, I wouldn't... Of course want... you will. Uh, but it may be until tomorrow It's settled, or... Dr. Forrester. And uh, if you're wondering how on earth you can put in your time in a place like Linda Rosa, there's a square dance tonight. <laughs> All right. I surrender. Uh, Sheriff. Yes? If that meteor is radioactive, you'd better keep people away from it. There might be very dangerous radiations. Oh, that's so, yeah. Okay, I'll post a couple of deputies. Is there anything else? No, but if you need me, you know where to find me. Yeah, sure. I'll be there myself at the square dance. Sure. You know, dancing is something I don't get much time for. Well, you should make time. Don't your girlfriends like to dance? I don't have much time for them either, I'm afraid. Oh, Dr. Forrester. Oh, evening, Sheriff. Uh, I was just talking by radio phone to one of my deputies out at the media. He says it's pretty well cooled off. Mm, good. Then we'll look at it again in the morning. All right. I'll call my deputies back and tell them to come on in. No tourists out there this time of night. And <laughs> Saturday night is Saturday night, you know. Hey, uh, Salvador. Yes? What did he say? Sheriff says to come on in. Oh, good. <sighs> mm, maybe we go have a beer, huh, Alonso? Just a minute. Alonso. Yeah, yeah, it's coming from that media. It's moving! Something is moving on top of it. It's turning. It's no meteor. Alonso, hit the dirt. Hey, he's coming right up through that opening in the top. Like a snake. Yeah. Or a periscope, like a cobra's head, only it's metal, some kind of green metal with eyes. He's turning all around. What's he looking for? Maybe us. Yeah. Maybe. Look, Salvador, this could be some sort of enemy snake attack. We gotta radio the sheriff. Yeah. But we don't let him see us, huh? No, we crawl along this ditch till we get near the patrol car and make a run for it, right? Maybe. Let's go. Run! We gotta run! Faster! He's looking right at us! He's gonna kill us! Ah! Hey, the lights! Who turned off those lights? Now wait, don't get panicky, folks. Sylvia! Dr. Forrester. Yes, Uncle Matt. Over here, Dr. Collins. <laughs> Good. Nothing to be alarmed about. You know, at midnight, they always play goodnight ladies and turn out the lights. <laughs> I think they're just ahead of time. Well, let's check our watches. I'll strike a match. Let's see, I have 11, 20... No, my watch has stopped. <laughs> well, that's strange. So is mine. <laughs> Dr. Forrester? Yeah, mine too. 
Well, there's only one explanation. All our watches must have been magnetized. But how? Oh, here we are, folks. Here's candles for everybody. Light them up. Oh, Sheriff. Yeah? Uh, do you happen to have a pocket compass? Pocket compass? For sure. sure. May, I, may I see it, please? Yeah, right here. All right, now what? Well, just look at it. Hmm? I'll be hanged, but that needle isn't pointing north. No, it isn't. It's pointing almost due west. Right to where that meteor came down. Sheriff? Hmm? Hey, wh where's the sheriff? Yes, what is it, Fiddler? Oh, hey, hey, come take a look outside. There's a big fire out in the hills. Is it west of town? Yeah, due west. The reddest looking blaze I ever saw. Sheriff, I hope your car is outside. It sure is. Come on. the lights went out. Power line's down. Yeah. It's funny. Alonzo and Salvador were going to go back into town, but well, there's their car right over there. And they must still be around. Yeah. Alonzo! Salvador! Uh, Sheriff, hmm? turn your flashlight over there, along that ditch. Uh, where? Right over there. Those two white mounds in the ditch. Are those ashes? or? Lord. Oh. I, nothing, nothing left but the, the outlines. Listen. Listen, what in the blaze? Now, quick. Did you see it? Yes. It's... Oh, look, uh, we've got to get word back to town. There, there's a transmitter in my car. You had a car, Sheriff. But, but Forrester, what, what is it? What, what kind of a gizmo is that thing? Oh. Until a minute ago, I'd have sooner believed in fairies, witches, and ghosts. But now... Now I think that gizmo is a machine from another planet. Forrester. Forrester, look. Coming over those mountains there. A second meteor. Just like the first. Sheriff... We've got to get word to the military right away. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, but uh, they'll never believe us. What will we tell them? Tell them the truth. That we're under invasion from outer space. We'll have Act Two of War of the Worlds in a moment. After a visit with Francis Scully. Well, Francis, my spies tell me that you were out at 20th Century Fox over the weekend. And it was a worthwhile trip, too, Ken. I went to preview their coming deluxe color cinemascope picture about auto racing in Europe. Oh, yes, that would be the racers, hmm? Say, I hear Kirk Douglas is great at it. <laughs> oh, he's in good company, too. Bella Darby, Gilbert Rowland, Cesar Romero, Lee J. Cobb, and Katie Urado are also stars. Well, those European racers are famous for their excitement and danger. And Henry Hathaway, who directed the racers, made sure movie fans would see the real thing. He used up over 90,000 feet of film shooting actual races. Well, they must have gotten some spectacular shots. Some fabulous shots, Ken. But the picture isn't all racing. The love and kisses department is well taken care of by Kirk Douglas and Bella Darvia. Well taken care of. <laughs> well, with Belly Darby and uh, Katie Arado and the racers, there'll be at least two Lux complexions on display. Well, that's what you like, isn't it? <laughs> well, I guess most everybody does, though. There's nothing like a real Lux complexion. And how true those words are, ladies. There's nothing like a real Lux complexion in Hollywood or anywhere. And it's true that nine out of ten movie stars like Bella Darby and Katie Arado count on Lux toilet soap to help keep their complexions looking like a star's complexion should. But Lux can be your soap, too. You don't have to be a movie star to have a movie star complexion. That's the beauty of Lux. It can give you skin that would be called beautiful anywhere, even in Hollywood, the beauty capital of the world. 
So use mild and gentle Lux. It's unconditionally guaranteed by Lever Brothers. Believe me, once you use it, you'll say there's no other soap quite like Lux. Now our producer, Mr. Cummings. Act two of War of the World, starring Dana Andrews as Clayton and Pat Crowley as Sylvia. Hey, here come the tanks! I said the area under the control of the United States Marines from El Toro Base. Colonel Ralph Hefner commanding. The gully where the machine landed is almost surrounded and... Oh, oh there's a the man we want to hear from. Uh, Dr. Forrester. Yeah? Uh, would you give us your opinion, sir? Are these meteor machines from Mars? Well, uh, uh, certainly from some planet other than our uh, own. Uh, directly into the microphone, please, Doctor. Well, if they are Martians, I'm sure the creatures that operate these machines must be quite uncomfortable in our heavier air and with the Earth's much stronger gravitational pull. What do you think they look like, sir? That's anybody's guess. We, we do know from animal evolution on this planet that it's possible they may have more than one brain, perhaps two or even more. And possibly they may even smell colors. Smell color. Well, that's speculation, of course. Hey, uh, Forrester. <laughs> yes? The uh, colonel wants you in the command post. Well, coming. Uh, if you'll excuse me, please. Uh, certainly, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Dr. Clayton Forrester, head of astrophysics at Pacific Tech. The observation post is on this hill. The recordless 75s are back here, Carbon Canyon. Well, colonel Hefner. Uh, in a moment, Forrester. Command, Hefner. Yes, that's right, Captain. Two rocket batteries on Hill 17 right now. Forrester? Yes? I want you to meet General Mann. He's in charge of intelligence for the Pacific area. General Dr. Clayton Forrester. I've heard quite a bit about you, Forrester. Glad you're with us. I hope I can be of some help, General. You can. First, let me brief you on the latest reports. Two machines have landed near Fresno, another outside Sacramento, two down on Long Island. They're outside London. They're in Naples, one in Santiago, Chile. Oh. Seem to be coming down at random. It's too soon to know. But apparently that machine out there in the gully was the first down. The lead ship, maybe. Very likely. And the second one is exactly two miles due north. As I understand it, Forrester, you actually saw the first ship send out that destructive ray. Yes, I did. That was an intense heat and light. Two thirds, sir. Almost as powerful as the sun. Atomic yes. power? Yes, sir. Yes, I'd, I'd say so, of some sort. Uh, General. Yes, Colonel. That was a relay from the Pentagon. Santiago, Chile radios that's under attack. Two thirds of the city already destroyed. Two-thirds? Yes, sir. But nothing like that can happen here, sir. We're ready for them. Listen. Is that it? Yes. Let's get to the observation post now. Lights out! Cut our lights! Lights off! Lights off! Lights! Lights! Keep your head down, General. Now focus your field glasses between these sandbags. Yes, you see the gully? There's a greenish light glowing over it. Wait. Something's rising. Like a periscope? Yes. And beneath that, a greenish machine, almost round. Just floating there in the air without propellers or jets. It must be supported by some sort of rays. Probably a kind of magnetic flux. Huh. They must be keeping the opposing poles in balance. And that lifts the machine. There's a second machine. And a third. Dr. Forrester, Dr. Forrester. Miss Van Buren, what are you doing? Uncle Matthew insisted on coming, and I wouldn't let him by himself. Dr. Forrester, you've got to talk to him. Miss Van Buren. Please, you've got to stop him. He, he wants to go out and talk to those meteor what? machines. All right, take me to him. Uncle Matthew keeps saying we should try to make the Martians understand we're willing to be friends. If they give us a chance to be. I know. Oh, but Uncle Matthew post. says it's Stand his duty as a fire. minister, a man of God. So where is he now? I left him right about... About here. Uncle Matt? Uncle Matt! Forrester, the machines are advancing. There's some fool out there walking to meet them. Oh, no. Uncle Matt! Uncle Matt! It's too late now. You can't save him. No, no, no! Artillery batteries, <laughs> fail! Rocket batteries, fail! Forrester, 
They're still there. They're untouched. Yes. They've put up some sort of electromagnetic covering, a transparent dome that stops the shell. They're coming at us! All batteries, repeat fire! It's impossible. One moment I got heavy artillery, tanks, and rockets, whole batteries of 105s, and then that ray hits them, and there's nothing. Nothing. Just a puff of ashes. Well, now we know why two-thirds of Santiago was destroyed. Why? But not how. I think I know, General. That heat ray neutralizes the masons. Masons are the atomic glue which holds all matter together. They're cut across their lines of magnetic force... And any object will simply cease to exist. Uh-huh. And just how do we defend ourselves against it? Not with shells and high explosives, I can tell you that. Take my word for it, General. You'd better talk to Washington about uranium and hydrogen bombs. Here they come. Here they come! Come on, let's get out of here. Everybody out! All commands pull back north of Highway 60, Turtle Bucker! Come on, hurry it up! Everybody out! Miss Van Buren. Sylvia. Mm? Wake up. Let's not spend all morning in a cellar pit. Mm. Oh. How long have we been here? Well, since the jeep ran out of gas, I guess about three hours. As near as I can figure it, we're somewhere southwest of Corona. And that machine? What's gone? It headed in the other direction. Oh, thank heavens. You know, I'm hungry. Well, you ought to be. Come on, on your feet now. There's a farmhouse across that field. Looks like the people took off in a big hurry. But maybe they left some food. Look, over the mountains. Yeah, <laughs> the good old Air Force. They found one of the machines. thinking about it. Let's hit for that farmhouse. Uh-huh. There are times when there's nothing so beautiful, so soul-satisfying as bacon and eggs. <laughs> and the people who lived here were so thoughtful to leave us some. Where's your plate? Right here. You know, I get most of my meals in coffee shops. It's pretty tame eating. Well, don't you live at home? No, I live on the campus. You see, I haven't any family. Oh, I come from a big one. There's nine of us, all in Minnesota except me. Well, Dr. Forrester? Hmm? Aren't you going to sit down? There is a kitchen table. Oh, yeah. Well, a, a big family must be fun. I imagine it makes you feel, well, as if as if you belong to something. Mm, it does. Maybe that's why I feel kind of lost right now. Yeah, I know. But everything's going to be all right, Sylvia. Is it? Well, at least we've got to think that. They, whatever they are, they murder everything they see, everything that moves. We're helpless. Sylvia... Every creature that has ever lived has had some sort of weakness. Not one of them has ever been invincible. And somehow, we'll find the weakness of these, these Martians, some way to stop them. I hope so. I'll get the coffee. You know, I feel like I did one time when, when I was a little girl. I'd wandered off. I'd forgotten why. But I became awfully scared and lonely. Finally, I went to a church. 
I was afraid to go anyplace else. I stayed right by that door, praying for the one who loved me best to come by and find me. It was Uncle Matthew who found me. I'm awfully sorry about him. Oh, I loved him very much. Oh, I could bawl my head off. But you're not going to. You're not the kind. What kind am I? The brave kind. Clayton! Get down, on the floor! Sylvia? Sylvia? Yes, Clayton? Are you all right? Yes. It sounds right outside the kitchen. It is. Sylvia, you've got to get a look at them. Oh, no. No. Shh. Don't you see? This is the first chance any human has had to get a real close-up of them. If I can tell General Mann and our scientists what kind of beings we're dealing with... All right. But I'm coming with you. Okay. Wait. Take this. What good is a carving knife? Maybe none, but take it. In the front room, come on. Ladies and gentlemen, for the benefit of those of you who don't know me, I'm General Mann of G2. I've asked you here because we desperately need the knowledge and skill of each one of you. Physicists, scientists, representatives of the 6th Army Command, the Marine Corps, Navy, Air Force, the heads of our law enforcement agencies, the Civil Defense and Red Cross units. The Secretary of Defense in Washington has instructed me to give the whole picture of what has happened and what lies before us. That is true. I'd like to see General Mann. What's all that commotion? Major, see what that is. Yes, sir. General Mann. General. Yes, Dr. Bilderbeck. That man is one of my colleagues, Dr. Clayton Forrester. Forrest? We thought he'd been killed. Let them through! Let them through! Forrester, Miss Van Buren, we gave you up 24 hours ago. You almost had reason to, General. Yes, the Martians tried to take us alive. What? Yeah, this morning, just outside of Corona. We managed to get away. We found an abandoned truck and drove to Pacific Tech. They told us you were here. Oh, by any chance, is Dr. Lucille Dupre in this room? Right here, Forrester. Oh, good. Dr. Dupre, I want you to analyze the stain on this cloth. I suggest that you leave for the laboratory right away. What kind of stain is it, Forrester? The blood of a Martian. A Martian? Forrester, I want a complete report of your experience. But first, I think you ought to hear what I was about to say. By all means, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the latest radio message from the Department of Defense. To General Mann, Command Post Xenophon, Los Angeles. Scandinavia presumed now in enemy control. All communications from Sweden, Norway, and Denmark blacked out. Paris now under attack. French cabinet is transferred to Strasbourg. Madrid totally destroyed. Rome, no further word, blacked out. London, blacked out. 
Buenos Aires blacked out. Philadelphia blacked out. New Orleans blacked out. General Mann? Yes. I've heard enough to convince me. Enough, I'm sure, to convince every physicist in this room. We must answer the enemy with our final weapon. I was just coming to that, Forrester. By order of the Secretary of Defense and authorized by the President of the United States, the city of Los Angeles is to be defended by full atomic force. Three hours from now, this afternoon at 1,600 hours, the flying wing will drop the newest and most deadly bomb ever built, a thermonuclear bomb of octopole power. In three hours, we shall know its effectiveness and possibly the fate of mankind. In a moment, Act Three of War of the Worlds. Ladies, when it comes to wash day, the big talk is all about Rinso Blue, the remarkable new detergent that washes whiter because it blues as it washes. And now there's even a song about it. Listen. Hi, this is Les Paul. And Mary Ford. This is the song of Rinso Blue, complete detergent, completely new. It gets clothes extra white and clean because it blues your washing, your washing machine. <laughs> Yes, Rinso Blue gets clothes extra white because it blues as it washes. So get Rinso Blue today. And just remember, ladies, if your present detergent doesn't blue as it washes, it's only doing half the job. So switch to new Rinso Blue. It does a grand job on dishes and glasses, too. And yet, it's so mild on your hands. Today, get new Rinso Blue. It washes whiter because it blues as it washes. And that's unconditionally guaranteed by Lever Brothers. We pause now for station identification. Curtain rises on Act Three of War of the World, starring Dana Andrews as Clayton and Pat Crowley as Sylvia. This report is being recorded on tape for future history. If there is to be any future history. The future of our civilization may well depend upon what happens here this afternoon. Attention, please, attention. Three minutes to bomb time. In case you didn't hear that, it is now three minutes to bomb time. Attention, Dr. Forrester. Please report to General Mann. The target for the bomb is a nest of Martian machines in the Puente Hills. We are approximately six miles from the target. There is, however, a forward observation post which has the Martians clearly in sight and which will report back to this base by telephone. You know, of course, that you're not supposed to be here. Everyone else has told me that from General Man down. But I'm only interested in where Clayton Forrester wants me. Now well, that is here. Attention, please. Two minutes to bomb time. Two minutes. Forrester. Forrester. Dupre. I thought you were back at the lab. I just finished that sample of Martian blood, Forrester. It's astounding. I've never seen blood crystals so anemic. Hmm. Huh. Anything else? Yes. The structure of the corpuscles is... Attention. The bomber is now approaching the target area. Prepare to take shelter. Forrester, General Mann wants us in his dugout. Oh, we're coming. We're coming. Watch your heads, everybody. There's not much clearance here. Attention. One minute. One minute. If you have no goggles, turn your backs to the blast. Remember, the heat flash and concussion that follow are dangerous. Are dangerous. Well, General Mann. Ah, uh, Forrester, I want you to stand by for the first damage reports. Certainly, sir. Major, open the line of the forward observation post. Yes, sir. Go ahead, sir. Observation. Yes, sir. The flying wing is now beginning its bomb run. Yes, sir. General, those Martian machines are throwing up some sort of a transparent dome over themselves. Uh-huh. That would be an electromagnetic shield. Thirty seconds. 30 seconds. Clayton? Yes? May I hold your hand? Of course. 20 seconds. Stand by. <clears throat> 10 seconds. 
nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Attention, prepare for heat wave and high velocity winds. Observation, can you see anything? Not yet, sir. An awful lot of smoke. General, General, we can see something moving. They're still there. They haven't even been touched. They're still... Observation. Come in. Observation, come in. Well, now we know the worst. We may not be through yet, General. Sure. No, there's still a chance. A forlorn hope, maybe, that our sciences can search out some weakness in these Martians. Yes, perhaps biologically, that anemic blood. Look, our battle now is for time. We've got to take our instruments and hide somewhere in the Rocky Mountains. Set up an emergency laboratory there. Well, I'm sure the Air Force stands ready to fly your equipment wherever you wish. That's good enough for us. Bilderbeck, Dupre, you too, Sylvia. As soon as we get back to Los Angeles, we'll gather up all the things we need. They're and... coming. They're coming. Everybody out of here. Everybody out. your homes at once. Take food and water and extra clothing with you. in the truck for me. Forrester, bring only the sonic microscopes. Okay. Oh, uh, which floor are they on? The tenth. The tenth, Forrester. Hurry, Clayton. Don't worry. I'll be back in five minutes.
I told him to wait here. Couldn't have been more than five minutes. Sylvia! Build him up! You play! Sylvia! Sylvia! Build her back! They will have left you too, eh? No. Something must have happened. They'll be back. Well, they were in a yellow truck that was... A truck? Sir, I'll give you $1,000. Huh? For what? Your place in that truck. Listen, I said they'll be... 2000 Look, I don't want anything from you. 5000 I... I'm rich. I've got it right here. My wife, servants, everybody. They, they all <laughs> ran off and left me. But you can have any amount you... No, I'm sorry. Money's no good now. 10000 sir. 10000 Sylvia! You pray! 50000 Build it back! A Sylvia! A hundred! Everything I've got! Everything! <laughs> Where? Where? Where can they be? <coughs> Sylvia! I'm looking for a girl, a tall, dark girl. She was driving a yellow truck and... Well, I'm sorry, ma'am, but she's lost. She's probably very frightened. Lost. She said the last time she was lost when she, when she was so frightened. Well, maybe that's where she went, a church. Sylvia! Sylvia? Sylvia! Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. Sylvia! Clayton! In here, him will here. I trust. Surely he shall deliver Let me thee through. from the snare of the fire. Let me through, please. My dearest. Oh, my dearest. Oh, darling. The mob. They took the and truck, the pushed us out in the street, blocks from where you left us. I ran back, but you were gone. It's all right now, Sylvia. It's all right. Yes. We're together. <laughs> A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. 
but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of thee. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even Clayton. the most high thy habitation. Yeah. There shall no evil befall thee. Something's happening to that machine. Shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Come on. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy way. Street, that body. Yeah. That's one of them. They're dying. They're dying everywhere. We prayed for a miracle, and it's happened. All over the world, in London, in Paris, in Rome, Rio de Janeiro, Melbourne, New York, and San Francisco, the terrible invasion began to collapse. The Martians had no resistance to the bacteria in our atmosphere, to which we have long since become immune. Once they had breathed our air, germs which no longer affect us began to kill them. The end came swiftly. After all that men could do had failed, the Martians were destroyed and mankind saved by the littlest thing which God, in his wisdom, had put upon this earth. In a moment, our stars will return. Pepsodent! White, white, whiter teeth, Pepsodent for me. Whiter teeth are guaranteed, brush them and you'll see. Right, no other leading toothpaste, not one, gets teeth as clean, as white as Pepsodent. You see, Pepsodent contains the most effective tooth cleaning ingredient in the world, IMP, insoluble metaphosphate. Wow! That's what it's called. IMP is found only in the Pepsodent Irium formula because Pepsodent uses the entire world supply. White, white, whiter teeth, Pepsodent for me. And oh yes, cleaner, whiter teeth naturally mean less chance of decay and a sweeter breath with a clean mouth taste for hours. Whiter teeth are guaranteed, brush them and you'll see. Lever Brothers makes this promise, this unconditional money-back guarantee. Change to Pepsodent and you'll see your teeth become whiter. Brush them and you'll see. Now, here's Mr. Cummings with our stars. And here they are, Dana Andrews and Pat Crowley. <laughs> Dana, how do you feel about planetary invasion? Well, Irving, if I have a choice, I'd rather we invaded them. <laughs> <laughs> then you'll want to see George Powell's new Technicolor picture for Paramount, Conquest of Space. Because whereas War of the Worlds is just science fiction, conquest of space is science fact. The entire action takes place on the planet Mars and the wheel, a man-made station some 1,100 miles above the Earth. Mars? It's a long way to Mars, even with a space station in between. Yes, Pat, the men who lead a fantastic existence on the wheel are building a spaceship for flight to the moon, but later... They receive orders to proceed directly to Mars. And they make it, of course. Yes, but it's a dangerous mission. And there's an exciting and suspenseful climax. And I think it's interesting that all the players are young unknowns who are getting their very first chance. And I hope they'll all be as big a hit as Pat. I understand there's a good chance your name may appear in the Academy Award nominations this week, Pat, for a Best Supporting Actress in your first big role in Forever Female. Oh, well, now that'd be too good to be true. But I'm sure Paramount's The Country Girl will be nominated. But I just don't see how anyone could choose between the performances of Bing Crosby and William Holden. And, of course, Grace Kelly's a cinch. Well, there's no doubt at all about you and Grace Kelly being Lux girls, is there? Oh, no, Irving. If getting an Oscar were as easy as having a Lux complexion, I'd be a cinch, too. I'll always use Lux for my complexion. It's just wonderful. And uh, now, how about next week's play, Irving? Well, next week, it's an entirely different type of adventure, Dana. One of our 20 greats, 
a story of a search for gold by a trio of fascinating characters, and it's filled with suspense right up to the unexpected climax. It's Warner Brothers, the treasure of Sierra Madre, and as our, our stars will be Edmund O'Brien and Walter Brennan. Oh, I'll have to listen to that, Irving. Good night. Good night. Good night. You are both great. You know, you women certainly have a right to complain about all the time you have to spend doing dishes. Well, it takes about five and a half hours a week just to do the dishes for a family of four. And considering that doing dishes is only one of the chores you have to do every day... <laughs> well, it certainly proves the truth of the saying, women's work is never done. But at least it's done easier with Lux Liquid Detergent. Yes, with Lux Liquid, you can get those dishes out of the way really fast and easy. Made especially for dishwashing, Lux Liquid floats grease off, gets plates and glasses sparkling clean. And you can skip the drying, too. Just rinse and let them drain dry. Just a teaspoonful does a dishpan full. One can outlasts several boxes of the leading laundry powder. And when you use Lux Liquid, your hands stay nice. Yes, ma'am. Lux Liquid's almost as mild as Lux toilet soap. <laughs> Ken, tell them about the way it's packed. Well, Lux Liquid is packed right in a can that won't break with a dripless spout that prevents spilling over the sides. Know how much I like Lux Liquid, ladies? I like it as much for dishes as I like Lux Flakes for nylons. Lux Liquid, like all Lever Brothers products, is unconditionally guaranteed. Your money back, if you don't agree, it's every bit as good as we say it is. Buy a can of Lux Liquid next time you mark it. It's the next best thing to a dishwashing machine. <laughs> Lever Brothers Company, makers of Lux Toilet Soap and Lux Liquid Detergent, invite you to be with us again next Tuesday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents The Treasure of Sierra Madre, starring Edmund O'Brien and Walter Brennan. This is Irving Cummings saying good night to you from Hollywood. Ladies and gentlemen, Radio Free Europe is our way of telling people in the enslaved countries about American life and its freedom. Radio Free Europe is a citizen-sponsored organization and it urgently needs your support. You can play a personal role in the Crusade for Freedom by mailing your contribution to Crusade for Freedom in care of your local postmaster. Dana Andrews may soon be seen in the Universal International Technicolor production, Smoke Signal. Heard in our cast tonight were Les Tremaine as General Mann, Herb Butterfield as Dr. Bilderbeck, Bill Boucher as the Sheriff, Paul Fries as the narrator, Harley Bear as Fiddler, Ken Peters as the reporter, and Howard McNear, William Conrad, George Neese, Robert Bailey, Herb Ellis, Irene Tedrow, Don Diamond, Jack Crucian, Frank Gersel, George Baxter, Trudor Mason, and Eddie Marr. Our radio play was adapted by Leonard St. Clair, and our music was composed and directed by Rudy Schrager. More and more Lux laundries are opening across the country. These carefully selected professional laundries use the same Lux flakes you use at home. Gentle Lux flakes plus professional methods means the cleanest clothes ever. And since Lux Flakes are so much easier on all fabrics, your clothes will last longer as well as look better. Let a Lux Laundry be your family laundry. Look for that Lux sign. And join us next Tuesday night to hear Treasure of the Sierra Madre with Edmund O'Brien and Walter Brennan. Let's visit with Fulmer McGee and Molly tonight on the NBC Radio Network. <laughs> <laughs> 